it has been a wild week for me this week, trying to find another car that I wanted to bring to the channel. I was gonna go pick up a 2008 Forester XT this weekend. Um, I'm gonna forewarn you guys now, if you guys are going to buy a used car from Private Party um, and they seem a little sketch, do yourself a favor and run the VIN on the car. Just please run the VIN. I was about to go pay cash for this 2008 Forester. Um, I had bought plane tickets to go fly out there, go pick up this thing and drive it back. Uh, but I just, the seller was being like weirdly sketch and whatnot and I just had a weird feeling in my gut, so I ran the VIN on the car. Turns out this far, the dude was selling it as a clean title. He refused to register it in his name because he didn't want to pay taxes on it, whatever, just beside the point. Decided to run the VIN on it the other night, and it ends up, the dude, the dude was selling his clean title, and it ends up the car was in 10 accidents. It was salvaged out in Canada, brought down to the US, where it was rebuilt in Ohio, and then transferred over to Washington with an Ohio clean title that had been title washed. Um, so I, I offered him like 4K cash for the car. I was like, hey, I'm still interested in the car. I'll give you 4K cash. He pretty much told me to kick rocks and then relisted the car for 12 grand. Um, so just be careful with what you guys are looking for and buying out there. Um, I'm still looking for a Forester XT Sports specifically and only 2006 to 2008. So I'm still actively looking for one. If I can find one, I will buy one. Uh, but that is not what we got today. Cause we got a new car that we brought to the channel. As you can see, Karma's still behind me, but let me show you some like snippet B-roll of this thing. Cause I am, I'm pumped. I'm pumped for this thing. It's so much fun. So I have literally no experience with a Volkswagen. I've never owned a Volkswagen, but I, I was sitting at home last night. I was thinking, what is the most unreliable thing next to a Subaru? And then it hit me, Volkswagen. I'm joking, I think. I actually don't know. Like I said, I have very minimal experience of Volkswagens. But here's the thing. We didn't just get the Golf R. Well, I got the Golf R. We also got a GTI. Well, Melanie got the GTI. So she had gotten the GTI that she had wanted. She got that before I got the Golf, or before I got the R. I don't really know what to call it. So she got a GTI a couple nights ago. I went out and I helped, I drove, I test drove it with her. I drove it around a little bit. I fell in love with that thing. That GTI, hers is a 2016 GTI with a DSG. She's at work right now, so hers will be shown in another video. Uh, this is a 2016 Golf R with the six speed. Uh, and this thing is like straight up a blast. Like coming from the world of Subaru only, there's a lot of differences between and nissans because i have a decent amount of time in nissans but coming from like the world of like japanese cars to anything euro i have absolutely no idea now i know what you're thinking tanner what about all the subaru stuff we're all here for subaru stuff also don't worry the 17 sti comes back in a day or two and i'm still on the hunt for an o or 06 to 08 forester xt but i wanted something different i wanted something that i've never had before that i've never done and something that will challenge me so i thought why not german because if Japanese isn't hard enough, let's do German. So I've already looked into some parts for this. I know Cobb makes an access port, they make an intake, they make a downpipe, they make a catback. There's a lot of stuff that I've seen with these. From what I've seen, they're stage three package with like the intercooler, downpipe intake, and like an OTS tune. The car will make over 400 horsepower. Um, so that's easy horsepower with these things. I don't plan on going crazy with this. I don't even know if I can go crazy with this. I like, I don't know enough about this car to make those calls quite yet. I know we're gonna start doing some basic bolt-on stuff here. We're gonna get wheels because I can't stand those things. They're hideous. I know that they're wheel they're not like wheel studs like on a normal car where if you take the lug nut off and it's like a nut it's like a nut with a stud on it so we're gonna get some like proper stud conversion stuff and actually do wheel lugs instead of that but i'm just not a huge fan of those wheels aside from that i'm really happy with the color i like the black i wanted something a little more like subtle and something that wasn't like all up in your face kind of like karma i wanted a car that was a little bit more incognito um and this kind of fit the bill now this I don't know how long we're going to keep it. This might be the trade-in for the 400Z or the Z when it comes out. Um, but I'm like loving this thing. So in the inside the car, like normally I hate leather interiors, but this is like a soft, nice leather that's not like super crunchy or super hard that I've seen in the past. Hold up, I got to move my seat back. 
There we go. So interior, interior wise, this is like the nicest interior I've ever had in a car. Like I said, leather, uh, which normally I'm not a big leather person. Normally I prefer cloth, but it's whatever. Like I said, we did get the six speed. Um, we are going to have to do some drivetrain modifications to this thing because A, I hate how that clutch feels. I absolutely hate it in comparison to the STI. Aside from that, I'm pretty happy with everything else in here. The six speed feels good. It's just that clutch down there that just feels like ass. Uh, push button start, didn't really care for that, but it came with it. Uh, all the standard Golf R stuff stuff but this thing's dope and it's quick like if we go to start it here oh fuck. I, hang on i gotta move my seat back after reach those pedals down there sorry i'm short boop 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 like it's so smooth like it's just so weird for me because i have only driven subarus for the past five or six years so anything that's not a subaru to me is just it's confusing and it's different and there's a lot to get used to but this thing is this thing's actually pretty cool and it really wasn't that bad on price. Um, from what I've been seeing, like I looked for a while for a, for like a fun JDM car that I've wanted for a while and the, the car market for anything Japanese right now is so hyper inflated that I, I literally cannot justify the prices of anything unless it's a car that I solely want and I didn't want to settle on something that I'd be kind of happy with. So started looking elsewhere. I had no intentions of buying this car last night. But I went down to the dealership and I, I test drove it and I absolutely loved this thing. Like I knew I'd like it after driving Melanie's GTI, but I didn't think I'd like the Golf R this much. It's still all wheel drive, uh, which is good. I think it's more biased to front wheel drive than it is all wheel drive, but I think the all wheel drive only kicks in when it needs to. I'm not 100% sure. I have a lot to learn with this car. There's a lot of confusion, but I like the idea of going into another car build, which I, like I said, I don't plan on going crazy with this one, but I said the same thing about literally every other car that I've bought. But we're gonna learn as we go. I know a lot of you guys have voted Volkswagens also um, so this will be fun exciting I'll learn from you guys probably more than you'll learn from me but it's dope I like this thing let me give you a little sound clip of the exhaust every it's 100% stock this car is not modified at all um, which is also a huge plus for me because I didn't want to buy a modified car that I knew literally nothing about because that will never end well uh, but let me let me show you the exhaust doesn't sound terrible doesn't sound good though We need to do the, the <laughs> tuning to turn it off. It purposely tries to make sound. Yeah. We need to do the turning to turn the stupid engine noise off. Like that gets pumped through the cabin. Boom, boom, boom. boom. Did you hear it when you were up there? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, heard I it like, in there. What the fuck? I knew it wasn't real. Okay, so already learning something new here. I didn't know the car came stock with launch control, but that's kind of cool. Now, one thing that I actually am kind of excited for is coding. With a lot of German cars, you can code, I think it's like the BIU or whatever controls like the, the CAN system in the car to be able to do like extra features. Like that stupid like engine noise that the car is pumping through into the cabin, we can totally turn that off. Um, we can get like power folding mirrors. We can set the key to be able to roll down the windows for if we like hold the unlock button, it'll roll down the windows. It's all like keyless entry and push button start and whatnot, so I don't think we really need it, but it's cool because I like the idea of being able to go into the car and like customize it more than what you can do from the factory and code it. Now, the thing that confuses me is the engine bay in this thing. I don't understand it. Now, just because I don't understand this doesn't mean that we can't learn. So I know it's a two liter inline four and it's all wheel drive. There's a turbo strap to it back there. The downpipe is V-band already, which is nice, which means no gaskets or anything like that. Um, the only thing that I'm not a huge fan of is like the amount of plastic that they use on everything now. Like I know the oil pan is like a composite plastic type thing, so that's gonna get swapped out for metal oil pan. It's a lot more accessible than on Subarus, which is nice. Uh, we are gonna be doing intake, downpipe, maybe a turbo, I don't quite know. I need to do more research into it. I know the car's direct injection. I know that they can take E85 as well. So I think for the time being, we do some bolt-ons, we do an OTS tune, uh, go down to surge line, maybe get pro tuned, something along those lines, put the car on E85 and see what it makes for power. Now from what I've read online, and I could be totally wrong about this, is the Golf R's 
take like a stupid amount of power on the stock block. Well, I guess in comparison to like Type RA STIs, it's fairly comparable. But like, it's good to know that the, the stock block can handle some power. I don't know what the clutches are really rated to, so that might be something that we have to do is swap the clutch in this, which I have absolutely no idea how to do, but we can figure that out. But I'm excited with it. I was looking at a MK 7.5, so this is a Mark 7. Melanie got a Mark 7 also, and then I think in 2018 is when the Mark 7.5s came out, and you get like a whole bunch of like upgraded interior options and whatnot. But from the 7 to the 7.5, it was like $10,000 difference, um, and I just didn't want to do that or anything like that. So we got this. I'm happy with it. I'm excited for it. Now, some of you guys might be wondering, hey, you pre-ordered you pre-ordered a new BRZ though. Is that still coming to the channel? Yes, I still have full intentions to go get that BRZ and bring it to the channel as well. So don't worry about it. Don't stress it. The BRZ is coming too. But for now, we have a we have a Golf R that we get to play with, which I am so freaking hyped about. It's just weird. Like, it's all so weird to me because it's all so different. Not a huge fan of the electronic parking brake in this car, though. I kind of wish it was like a normal handbrake, but technology changes. I'm open to it, whatever. Now, I'm not going to go like full in into detail of like all the little quirks and features as Doug DeMiro would call them um, because you guys, there's probably tons of videos out there covering the Mark 7 Golf R. Or like, I don't even know, is it just a Mark 7? Do I call it a Golf? I'm just gonna call it the R from here on out. There's probably a ton of videos out there going over the R, but let's go drive it around a little bit so that way I can show you. Like, this thing is fun straight out of the box. It's just so weird, and this thing's so fun, like. <laughs> it only makes 292 crank horsepower right now from the factory, uh, but even just making that, it's, so, it's such a different driving feel than the Subaru is. But it's so much fun because it's not like an ungodly amount of power where you're like, all right, if I use this, I'm gonna get pulled over all the time. Like this is a car you can go like in its current form, I guess I should say, because we both, we all know I'm gonna modify this car, but this car is in, in its current form is one that I can actually like go 100% with, actually play with and like get on it. It's a blast, I've been loving it. It has a weird smell. It's like, well, not a weird smell. Like it smells good in here but it's a different smell. We definitely need to get these windows tinted because I'm definitely not okay with this, but I really like how I have like, if I come down here, I guess it's kind of like SI drive and the STI. If you hit mode, you have comfort, normal, race, and then you have like individual settings and you can go in there and customize it however you want. I don't really know what the different customization options offer. Like, oh, look at that. The Subaru owner didn't even look at me. It's so weird. Normally, normally I get waved at. Do golf owners wave it over? Am I supposed to wave at people? Is that a thing? I don't understand. I don't know the courtesies of European cars. I'm so sorry, everyone. I don't know why I'm saying sorry. One thing I am going to note is even though this car's all wheel drive, I prefer Subaru's all wheel drive. Just in the, the day that I've had the car and driven it around a little bit, I have noticed that Subaru's all wheel drive I do prefer over this, but this is fun. Like it's still a fun all wheel drive setup. I think it's just more like front wheel drive bias and it's such a different driving experience the way the power comes on. Like with the 05 STI, I am so used to the power coming on so much earlier. <laughs> I, I have to like learn how to drive it. I'm also like definitely not used to this clutch. This The clutch engagement on this thing feels so much different than it did on the, uh, or than it does on the 05 and the 17. The, the 17 STI with the ACT mod twin in there feels OEM like for a Subaru clutch. Karma's clutch is very, very aggressive being a six puck and well, it's full sprung and everything like that. But this clutch, it feels, it reminds me of a stock. If you have an FA20 WRX, that's what this clutch reminds me of. It's not an aggressive clutch at all. <laughs> uh, this thing's fun, dude. Like I've been so picky with other cars recently that I needed to open up my expansion for what I'm like open to. I'm gonna let this mailman go first. I don't wanna be a dick. I've just been, I've been so picky with what I've been trying to find that I haven't looked into other like car markets like European or anything like that. And let's do a poll. Oh, this clutch. Like it feels quick. It's not, I'm not gonna sit here and say this car's fast. It's not fast. Like we, the other cars that we have, the, the Subarus are much faster than this, but it feels quick and it feels fun as a, like, as a new daily coming in. And I'm very curious from everything that I've seen in videos and read on forums already, 
everyone's saying that just like a tune on these wakes them up dramatically. I mean, that can be said about any car out there. I know Volkswagens, very, very like little. I know very little about these cars. Um, but I'm so excited for everything that I'm gonna learn with this. Like expanding into something that's not just Japanese cars for me is going to open up like the amount of knowledge I can learn, the differences between, I know USDM cars fairly well. I've had a couple in the past. I know JDM cars exceptionally well, especially Subarus, but I've never had any experience with this. One thing that is definitely going to take some time for me to get used to is the headlights. I, I, don't, I don't like this. I don't like how the headlights are like set off to the side over here and they're not like actually on it's just it's just different i'm i'm not saying it's a bad thing i'm just saying it's weird everything's just weird but i am like super digging the interior in here it feels so cozy there's a fellow gti owner up there see i don't know the courtesies of european cars am i supposed to wave am i supposed to wave at other ones do they wave to me I'm definitely not a huge fan of the fake engine noise being pumped into the uh, pumped into the cabin. I know once we put an intake on here and we get an exhaust on here, the car's gonna sound dramatically better. Um, it's just very muted right now. The car feels like exceptionally muted. But I'm open to the change. I like it. I'm fucking. I'm digging it, dude. This thing's cool. Some of you guys might be upset that I got something aside from a Subaru. Like I said, I'm still looking for a Forester. XT to be able to learn to tune on. It's just, I am, I'm not open to 0405s. I don't want to settle on a Forester. If I get a Forester, I want it to be the one I want. Hello, STI. I'd wave to you, but I don't, uh, you'd probably look at me stupid if I did. I don't want to settle on a car. I've done that in the past and I tend to sell those cars relatively quickly. If I buy one, that's just not everything I want out of it. I found plenty of 0405 Foresters for sale. They're cool cars. It's just for me, I, I want an 06 to 08. I've always wanted an 06 to, I've always wanted an 06 to 08 Forester XT Sports. Um, so Subaru stuff is, it's not like it's disappearing. We're still actively looking for a Subaru. We still have the BRZ planning on coming. We have the 17 STI coming back. Um, but this is like a good gateway for me to be able to expand what I know and kind of branch out a little bit more. And it's fun. Like it's a koozie. This heated seat is way too hot for my butt right now. It's a fun car, I like it, I'm excited. I need to spend more seat time with the car, learning it a little bit more um, before I straight up jump into it. I'll probably order an access port for this thing next week and maybe an intake just to start things off. I know the stage three package for this is an intercooler, a downpipe, an intake, uh, the access port, and I think just a tune, and that'll give you a little over 400 horsepower. I don't know if Cobb measures that as BHP or wheel horsepower, uh, rated to about 400 little around 400 which is crazy to think for me because with subarus we have to do so much to get to 400 horsepower and to think that just a, a downpipe and intake and intercooler and a tune gets you there roughly that's in, it blows my mind you can get to 400 horsepower in this thing for three grand like 3500 dollars, including the price of the access port and the ots tune which comes with it but I will say arguably, I think my favorite thing about this is the cup holders. They have the little doodads in the cup holders that actually hold your cup in place. You know how many times I've spilled my drink in the STIs because my cups just like, or my drinks always just slide around in there? It's bonkers. <laughs> uh, what's fuel economy? I don't know. It feels so, it's such a weird feeling. I love it. Anyways, we're almost back to the house. So let me swing back to the house. I just, I'm so excited for this. So you guys, I'll do comparison videos between the Golf R with the six speed and Melanie's GTI with the DSG. I surprisingly like that DSG a lot more than I thought I would. Like when we went out to go test drive that thing, it was a blast. It was a blast test driving that thing. I had so much fun with it. And that's really what led me to be like, all right, I'm like open to the fact of getting something a little bit different. Maybe, maybe something European like this. Is it European or German? I don't know what you call it. Regardless, it opened my eyes to to the idea that like there's other things aside from Japanese cars out there that are fun. Like I'm a I'm not just like a Subaru diehard enthusiast. Like I'm a car enthusiast. Like I like other cars aside from Subarus also. But let's swing back to the house. I love this thing. 
Like I said before, it's my first European car. It's my first Volkswagen. I don't know a ton about them. I have a lot to learn. I'm totally open to any form suggestions you guys have. I know some of you guys have Volkswagens, GTIs, maybe R's, uh, GLIs, all that kind of stuff. GT, I think I said GTIs. I don't even remember, but I'm having a blast with this thing. I'm so excited to start modifying it. So, so, so excited to get more seat time with it. Um, but for real, going back to the whole Forester thing, if you guys do happen to come across, Jesus, it's so bright. If you guys do happen to come across like a clean title 06 to 08 Forester XT sports it can be manual or it can be auto i really don't care if it's an auto i'll swap it to a manual it's not a big deal please feel free to drop that link my way because i'm still looking for them and i'll actively be looking for them up until we find one but for the time being 2016 golf r i am about it i'm about it let me know what you guys think of the golf r down in the comments below um I'm pumped for it. I'm pumped for it. But that's all I got for you guys on this one. Uh, we're gonna be doing some driving videos with this and Karma before Karma goes to its new home at some point in the future. No idea when. Um, but with that, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies. Woo!